So I said to myself, obviously, I want to open up a business. So I did it. Yeah. I started small. I didn't start with like 30, 40 grand, which is something that I would be doing nowadays, you know? Yeah. Start on a big venture for, for that kind of uh, money. But back then... What is going on guys? Welcome back to CEO Cast. I'm your host Raheem and today you are joining me with Tarek Mia, the CEO of Picture That. So I'll hand it straight over to you Tarek. Tell me about yourself. How did Picture That start and all about yourself right now? So um, thank you for having me first and foremost Raheem. Yeah, um, well. it's, 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 it's a pleasure. This is actually one of my first podcasts so I feel quite privileged to be in this position. Um, so getting down to how Picture That started. Um, Picture That started back in um 2011 um december of 2011 now picture that was never a media company it never uh, was in the wedding industry it started off as a studio uh a studio based uh indiv- so i in, as an individual basically it wasn't a company mm. so i used to go to weddings uh with a a studio basically so you know how you have a photo booth nowadays it's all like um automized so yeah. you go in hit the buttons and it prints see a lot of weddings like. and events exactly so yeah. i used to go to weddings set up a backdrop uh with two lights on each side i had a little semi-pro camera yeah. uh, it was a nikon d90 back in 2011 again that was a really good camera for then um i still actually have that camera as well um so take photos um and i, I used to print those photos on a normal inkjet printer your household inkjet printers uh, and put those photos in an, uh, a strut mount, so those school uh, uh, card strut mounts as a frame. Yeah. And I used to sell those photos for one for ten pounds, two for fifteen pounds. Now the amazing part of my journey is the fact that I literally started off with fifteen hundred pounds, and that fifteen hundred pounds bought me the camera, the printer, the backdrops, the ink, the paper, A to Z. Yeah. And the rest of my investment was my time. I invested my time into. Um, uh, researching on how to use that specific camera, yeah. how to use the p- specific softwares, um, how to take camera, uh, sorry, shots with the camera. I never knew what ISO was. I never knew what shutter speed was. I never knew what f-stop or aperture just, was. Just a quick one. How old were you at the time? So, ne- uh, so December of twenty um, eleven, I would have been twenty one. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. so, so I was still at university age, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. What were you studying at university? So I studied um, motion graphics yeah. at Ravensbourne University. So first year was in Colchester, um, sorry, Chislehurst, apologies, Chislehurst in Kent. And my second year was in uh, Greenwich, just in front of the O2. Yeah. Uh, so Ravensbourne is the university that I was at. And um, as I was telling you earlier as well, I left um, university uh, after doing my second year to pursue the business. And Alhamdulillah, since then, obviously, I've never looked back. Mm. Um so yeah, that's 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 it really. Just just a t- quick one touching on what something you just said there, because yes. um, funny enough, I actually put a post out recently of what would you do in a certain situation. So as you just said, you left your uh, you left university Correct. in your second year. Yes, yes. So you didn't complete the degree. I didn't know. So I did my two years. So and that's it. what was the reason for you to go full cent? Was it to do with you saw business booming, taking off, or so? I'll tell you what. I always said this to my parents uh, or in my family, like I'm not an educational person. I, I used to love my art and design back in school, yeah. um, uh, Photoshop, uh, all these like uh, media related softwares in Something college. Something can be creative. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more of a hands-on kind of person. You know, yeah. there's people who are more literate in terms of um, just bo- a bookworm. Yeah, yeah. I'm and then you've got that. the others who are more just <clears throat> um, a, a doing kind of person. Yeah. They, they're more doers than writers, should I say. So I'm that kind of person. I like to get my hands dirty, do things. That's what my passion is and was. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, one of the main reasons why I left university is because uni was all about ideas and concepts. Yeah. And at that time, I was thinking to myself, why am I paying 3,000 X amount, 3,250 pounds, obviously back then. Now it's like yeah, 9,000 9, or something. Like, yeah. So back then I was thinking, why am I paying you three and a half grand nearly for me to just literally brainstorm ideas. I could do that at home. Mm. But now I realize, I realize why? Because I can have a camera, Raheem, you can have a camera, which you do as well. Yeah. What's going to set me and you aside is the ideas. Yeah. It's the vision. It's you actually get it? pulling the product together. Correct, exactly. Me and you can have the same lens, the same camera, yeah. but if I can do a wicked shot, something that's never been done before, mm. that's what will set me aside. So I've realized that later on and I'm, I'm actually realizing it now as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why I left because I I, I never felt university as yeah. much. I was more into my doing 
and I, I loved I'm, and I was passionate. I'm pretty much exactly the same like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah, mm. yeah. So passion took me over and said to me, Tarek, forget uni, pursue the business. Alhamdulillah, the business was, so your question was, was it doing well? Alhamdulillah, the business was doing well for what it is. Um, it wasn't at its peak, obviously, yeah. but it was generating enough for me to say, you know what, bismillah, let me do it. Let me just get myself away from university, take a little gap. Go full and Go full, full, uh, full one year. So I said to myself, let me take that one year gap, yeah. p- uh, put my time and attention to the business for one year. If it doesn't work, I can always go back to university. Okay, okay, so, you so see, you've done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Actually, yeah. So I took that gap, in other words. Mm. Uh, and I, then obviously, Alhamdulillah again, like I never had to go back and I pursued it and I just took it to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. And soon as you know it, from my bedroom, which is where I started, I took out a um, an office yeah, um, and bam, from one person to another to another, I had a big team mm. and, and still have Alhamdulillah as well now. That's sick. No, that's, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this podcast because like I said to you before, I'm very intrigued about your story and how you've built picture that and yourself, but also because being a creative person, well, I like to think myself, myself anyway, where you like to pull pictures together, whether it's me editing this podcast and doing some certain things, it's having... It takes someone to have a creative mind to do right. that. I agree. And it's kind of like a dive into your creative mind in this podcast, in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's yeah, sick. Yeah. So no, now you're at the place where you are now, which is sick, Alhamdulillah. You smashed it. It's, it's, it's been a long and a tough journey, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll, I'll wait for you to ask me these questions because there's a, there's, a, there's a lot that a lot of people need to know mm. that, um, yes, life is all nice and cushy right now but I've got small stories that I would want to share yeah. it might make me look like a weak or a small person or not m- much of a man but these stories are important for me to portray genuine stories it's genuine stories it's true stories yeah. and it's important for me to tell everyone out there because it's gonna it's gonna allow them to feel right about certain things that will happen yes. within their process of success as well. Yes, 100%. So it's not wrong for you to s- sit there and feel stressed and scream at f- friends and family or not go on holidays with your boys. Yeah, or because whatever. a lot of people don't talk about that stuff. They don't. Everyone talks about success, but success has weaknesses, bro. Yeah, they don't talk about the nitty gritty, dirty things that go, exactly. that happen behind the I scenes. Agree. I agree. So in 2020 now, how would you describe picture that? What is it? So 2020, um, pretty much, um, let's just say about eight, nine years on from when I first started. Yeah. Um, I'd say, alhamdulillah, picture that has literally taken over definitely East London. Yeah, We're known f- throughout the UK. Alhamdulillah, we've done international destination weddings as well. But how would I describe it? I'd say it's a very strong brand. <clears throat> it's a brand that uh, strives to be innovative. It's a brand that uh, tries their best to keep their clients happy. Uh, a brand that um, tries... Th- to, and it does actually, not even tries, does keep a friendly level with their clientele. So you, my clients, our clients are not just customers, they're, yeah. they're friends as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I've seen, yeah. Exactly. Um, so I'd say we're an, we're very strong mm. uh, as a brand. Uh, a lot of people, alhamdulillah, always message, always comment saying, guys, I can't wait to get married. Or when I watch your trailer, it makes me want to get married. <laughs> and stuff like that, it just it makes you feel amazing because... Yeah. To me, it's it's a video that I've created. It's a, sh- a wedding that I've shot, and obviously because I've been doing it for such a long time, it's an it's a piece of cake. Yeah, like for me, it's a piece of cake. But, but it's a piece of magical art. Exactly, the plan. correct. It's been mastered yeah. to the best of its ca- capabilities, and people look at it and have visions, ideas, yeah. and thoughts around it. So yeah, ultimately, I, I would say. Alhamdulillah, we've, we've achieved a lot and we are a brand. A lot of, a lot of uh, startup companies uh, admire our work and mm. look at us and, and try and obviously replicate certain things. And that on its own just shows how strong you are as a brand and, yeah. and how, how innovative or where you stand on the uh, uh, chain of, of, of your hierarchy, should I say. Yeah, because you know what it is? If you go on your Instagram, or picture that's Instagram anyway, you can see, uh, how do I explain it? There's like a, a level of, detail in the edit and the way it's been edited that you can tell that that's a picture that that's a picture that edit that's a picture that movie yes yes do you feel proud I, I, of that? I, I like i like what you've just said there because um you are right each company has uh, their own uh, what's that word i'm looking for it's 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 a uh, their own flavor own flavor uh, plus, it's, it's it's just an image of how what you portray yourself as. Yeah. And I believe you're right. Picture that has uh, a brand um, of how we portray ourselves. Mm. Um, so yeah, when you go into our page, you will see certain things that are. Um, it's kind of a continuous thing, but different faces in terms of clients. Yeah. But the style is pretty much the same, and we always try and obviously innovate with different yeah. things that we do as well. So a question that audience might have, and I've got it myself actually. Yeah. 
that transition from when you were doing photo shoots yes to now was like perfection in wedding uh, videography and cinematography yeah what made you do that transition and why the switch from one to the other i like i like the fact that you've actually asked me that um all right so this is where it gets a bit to the sad side of the stories um so between 2000 and December 2011, yeah. so pretty much to the end, so 12, 2012, touching 2012, to January 2013, so pretty much like a 12 to 13 month, months transition. That's when I was doing the studio photography. Now, the story behind the studio stuff is that I never used to go to a booking or, a, or an event where I'd be booked. So it wasn't a pre-booked like, oh, Tarek, we'll give you £100, £200, £300, please come to our wedding, yeah. take those photos and give uh, the, you know, the photo booth style mm. photos. It was never that. I went in empty handed empty handed meaning like i never had a single penny at the job so sometimes i used to go make nothing and i swear to god yeah. make make nothing um bearing in mind i had another person who was helping me on the day as well so i had to pay their wages as well um so there were times where i used to make five pounds ten pounds twenty pounds whatever it is sometimes you used to make 100 200 pounds which were the best days so were you, were you doing it more so for passion it was more for passion, correct? Okay, I used yeah. to enjoy it. Plus, I used to always want to own my own business. Yeah, that was. I think those were the two things. The media side is passion. Plus, I I, I wanted to own my own business. Yeah. So those two collided. It's like getting your foot in the door. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So the reason why is because I thought to myself after one year, t- like Tara, you can't do this forever, bro. This is not a career. This is not something that you can actually put on uh, on your uh, portfolio saying I'm a business owner. It's, it's a business, Alhamdulillah, but it's not something that's rock. So I said yeah. to myself. You know what, Alhamdulillah, you've done it pretty well in the past one year. You've saved up a lot of money. Start buying yourself a professional camera. And that's when I bought the Canon 5D Mark II. So people who know their cameras, you will understand what the Canon 5D Mark II is. So that was my first camera. That's an expensive camera. That's an expensive camera. (laughs) Back then, um, the body with the kit lens was about two, 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 eight. Yeah, about three grand, like you said. About two, eight to three grand. And for me, bro, at the age of 22 at that time, three grand was a lot of money. Yeah. It was a lot of money. Considering I was only working as picture that um, and I never had on my other part-time jobs because I let go of my other part-time jobs. Yeah. Um, so that was a lot of money. So I invested in that. And since then, I started getting, obviously, small bookings. I remember my first ever job was like a little birthday party. Mm. Uh, and I charged about four or five hundred quid. And I was quite chuffed over it. And that was for photography and video. So that's, that's uh, obviously com- in comparison to now, it's nothing. But back then, yes, back like, then it was a lot. Like, wow. And that was a secured income as well. Yeah. Like before you step into the event, you you know you've got five hundred quid. Does that yeah, makes sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that was it really, because I didn't have a security. I didn't have um, a proper business model that I can say, you know what, at, at, by the end of this year, I know what I'm going to make. I never mm. knew what I was going to make. I didn't even know what I was going to make that day, let alone the whole year. Do you see? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I know what you're saying, yeah. so it, it's that drive that made, said to myself, you know what, Tarek, mate, you need to crack on. You need yeah. to move to the next level. And Alhamdulillah, I chose that and I, I did, I've not I've not regretted it really. No, that's sick. So something you just said there, which I think is, I mean, I've experienced it in, the, in this podcast. I can tell anyone who's watching this right now for a fact that it's not, cheap at all to get into it it's very expensive to buy cameras i mean before I even i didn't know anything about cameras before CEO cost and so when i was looking at cameras i thought okay yeah maybe one or 200 pounds something yeah, like that for yeah, a nice yeah. camera or get set up but it adds up to be over thousands it does so at a young age 22 like you said how did you a fund it um but mainly b what was your mindset towards spending that much that sort of money on that because a lot of people at like my age or whatever, they'll see a few grand maybe at the time yeah, buy a yeah. nice car, Correct. invest in something to make themselves feel a bit more happy, like whether it's car clothes, whatever. Mm-hmm. So what was that like for you? I mean, I'm going to start a bit more further back. And why, why I'm going to start that is so that people who are watching this feel comfortable with what they're doing right now at yeah. the age of whatever. Yeah. Um. So my first job, ever job uh, at the age of 17, um, I used to be in second year college, if I'm correct, or first year, I forgot. 17, I think it was first year. So I used to go to college, do my multimedia in Hamlet's College um, in E14. Um, so at that age, I started working. I, uh, my first job was at a, uh, an, an, a toy warehouse. So stacking shelves, um, blah, 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 toy warehouse. And then I simultaneously, I had my second job, which, which was at Domino's Pizza. Yeah. It was about two and a half hours away. Uh, blah, 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 I used to go commute with the train. Two and a half hours away. I used to do four hour shift, another two and a half hours back. So I did not like make it, it was never given to me. Like my, my father didn't give me money. My m- mother didn't give me money. Not that I'm, I'm, I'm complaining. I'm just saying like I grafted from an early stage, from an early young age. 
So those were my two jobs. And I used to simultaneously at one point have three jobs. In fact, I used to work for network research, which was, which is in central London doing um, surveys. So like a um, um, telephone um, interview kind of thing. Okay, yeah. So, um, so I used to do that. Now, as time went by, obviously I dropped the warehouse, blah, blah, blah. Then I dropped dominoes, blah, blah, blah. And then at simultaneously I started doing picture that. So I used to have a small amount of savings. And uh, I remember one point, and it reminds me, I was with my friend Anha. Um, if, Anha, if you're watching this, I'm sure you'll remember as well. Bo, in Bo, um, next to the Bo DLR station, there's the Barclays Bank. Now yeah. it's closed, obviously. Yeah. I went into um, uh, Bo, uh, Bo Barclays and um, I, I put in my savings card because I needed to give him some money. And I had a savings at the age of 21 or 22 of 2,000 pounds. Now, Alhamdulillah, boys, yeah, I'm being serious. At that time, I used to feel so happy. Two thousand pounds was a lot of Especially money. Especially when you've worked hard for yes, it. Yes, bro, I'm telling you, bro. Yeah. Like my week, uh, my monthly uh, earnings after all the deductions were like three, four hundred quid. Yeah. So to save up two grand, it's a lot. After your expenditures, yeah, it's a lot. Imagine I had a, I had a car at that time. You know, I had small costs yeah. here and there, mobile insurance petrol all them things so two thousand pounds at the age of 21 or 22 for me it felt like a lot of money mm. um that was the two thousand pounds that i used to invest and your question was obviously what made you do it yeah. why would you put so much money on or what made you feel comfortable yeah. in doing it i think the biggest thing in life is when you want something you have to go for it you say bismillah and i always say bismillah and go for it whether it's buying a car starting up a business, doing whatever. Anything that's got something, uh, uh, money involved, just do it. But it's not about just doing it, it's the fact that you feel right about it as well. And for me at the age where I was, um, I didn't have nothing. I didn't have nothing to lose either. Um, I thought to myself, you know what? I love what I do. I always wanted to open up a business. I've always told my dad, dad, let's open up a takeaway. He's a, he's a chef. He's a normal Bengali father who, who, who is a chef. Okay, yeah. He, he did, he, he's not courageous as me. He's not, he's not, he's not strong mm. minded as me. And I think that's what sets me aside from a lot of people in my family as well. Um, he didn't want to do it. He was always like ducking and diving. So I said to myself, obviously, I want to open up a business. So I did it. Yeah. I started small. I didn't start with like 30, 40 grand, which is something that I would be doing nowadays, you know, yeah. start on a big venture for, for that kind of uh, money. But back then, it was a lot of money for myself. And I did it only because I had a passion and I had a drive to run my own business, do something, be a, sell be a salesman, really. Um, and that's what it was. Us being Asian... I'm not sure about you, but my family have a say in anything in my life, whatever I want to do, my decisions. So did your family say anything to you investing, because like you said, two grand's a lot of money. Yes, yes, Did yes. they say anything about that? Um, I'll tell you something. My my father is a huge uh, ro a role model to myself. I mean, although he hasn't, he hasn't really um, um, opened a business and achieved in that respect, but as a human being, my mum and dad are huge uh, role models to myself. Um, I always ask their permission. Mm. I always ask the permission whether it's buying a car, which I don't have to. It's my car. I want to buy with my money. I'm not asking dad for yeah. money, whatnot, whatnot. Uh, whether it's starting up a business or even buying a property, whatever. I always ask my parents for, for their advice and for their blessing, should I yeah. say. Um, at that point, they didn't. They, they, they gave me the support. I'll be very honest with you. And um, I love them to, to bits because of those reasons, because they, they never felt, they never made me feel uh, like I was doing something wrong. Like, imagine this. Uh, pretty much what, uh, what, nine years ago? Photography and video was never a- um, It was never such it, a big it, thing it, like it that. It was never yeah. a trend. Yeah. Like nowadays, barbers, barbers are a trend, bro. <laughs> Before, your dad will slap you saying, you want to become a barber? <laughs> Why am I spending money for you to go to college, university, whatnot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll slap you. But now it's a trend. Mm. There's boys out there who become barbers, become a business owner yeah. and, and, and are respected as a business owner mm. because of a set of skills. Respected in the community. In the community as well. Yeah. And believe me, boys, back then, uh, 2011, etc., photography and video was laughed at. Yeah. I was known as a cameraman. I, in Bengali terms, camera better. Yeah. You see? So that's what I was known as. Um, my father and my mother, they, 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 they never disrespected that. They, they knew I had a passion. They, they respected that I wanted to do something. And they always helped me out. And a small example, um, when I started doing the whole picture out of the studio side of things, I set up my studio, my basically uh, office in my bedroom. Mm. I used to have clients come into my bedroom. Oh, seriously? I swear to God. And obviously I didn't touch base on this. So the first seven to eight months, so 27, uh, 2013 Jan yeah. to, to November, sorry, apologies. So about 11 months. All my clients, so some of these people most probably are watching now and I'm sure they're like, Alhamdulillah, they're saying Alhamdulillah to myself. I had clients come to my room um, uh, to watch trailers 
to to book me to pay deposits yeah. and etc. So I highly, highly respect every single one of those clients of mine who trusted me. But I never had an office. I never had a limited company. I never had nothing to my name. All they did was respect and trust me and see something in me, yeah. a value in me, the passion in me. And because of those values and passion, they were like, you know what? Bismillah, let's give him the deposit. He, he's capable of doing it. And without them, I would never be where I am. Yeah. There's, there's a couple of people I remember. Man. There was moments where I, I, I used to let them watch the movie and I used to go buy pizza. Them, yeah, I swear to God. Let them watch the film. Yeah. I used to go out, buy pizza, yeah. and we used to have pizza while they were in my room, sitting on my bed, watching the wedding. And they're film. your clients. They're my clients. So okay. it's stuff like that. Like again, I have, you know, Alhamdulillah, I've got a big cinema room now here, which we're sitting in. It's, it's a huge room, which has no purpose of making money. It has no purpose of making money. It's just purely to satisfy my clients, for them to watch a wedding film here in the best of its abilities, something that majority of my clients wouldn't be able to do. They're not going to have a 5.1 surround sound. They're not going to have a 120 inch screen in their house. Mm. They're not going to have the peace and quiet of not having other people, uh, um, you know, talking or distracting and whatnot. It's just, we close the door, they watch it, they love it. They've got the whole experience of a cinema experience, basically. Yeah. Stuff like that is what I've done now um, only because I value my clients so much. And again, it's just the whole brand aspect as well. At the time when you had all the clients come to your bedroom and, yeah. and to, your, to your house to see the footage and your, to see what the art you can make. Yes. How did you feel knowing that firstly, you're getting clients coming to your own house and they're interested in the product? Yes, yes, yes. But did it have any sort of knock on effect of thinking, I've got to get out of this place. I've got to be more professional about things or yes. how was it? So, um, like I said, from January 2013 to November 2013 is when I was in my house. And bro, believe me, the, the success rates between those 11 months were phenomenal, mashallah. Like, I became from no one to something. Mm. I had respect. Like, I remember my first shoots where people were telling me what to do. They were they were treating you as a cameraman. And was it, sorry, was this just you at the time yourself as well? It was me and one more person. Oh, fair enough. Uh, one more person. Um, so I was just, basically, I was the videographer, he was the photographer. But initially, as you, as you obviously, as I said right at the beginning, I was doing photography at the studio stuff. Yeah. So what happened then was I had to train him to do photography and I then learned cinematography. Video, yeah. And one thing that's quite important is, I, I must say to everyone, is that I never worked for a media company yeah i never worked for someone to learn how to edit how to shoot or steal their ideas or or backstab them or take take whatever they've worked so hard for in the past years and whatnot and then to start, start up my own business company, yeah. no alhamdulillah that's one thing that i would always respect my for myself mm. for because this is why i'm comfortable telling you my story because there is no gaps that i'm missing there is no nothing that i'm taking yeah. it's all organic yeah i'm not taking anything away to make myself look like i'm i'm this Something wicked that not, guy yeah. that i'm not because i be we became so big at that point i think to myself you know what this is it it's the time to move into your office because yes the brand is getting so so much more stronger mm. and i can't have people saying oh picture that's running from my bedroom yeah so i did feel the <laughs> like a reputation sort of thing. Is a, exactly yeah. i felt the necessity to move out mm. get into an office create a proper brand and become a company, a limited company. Yeah. So yes, November 2013 is when we went to move, we went, we moved into Bow Business Center in E3, obviously. Uh, we had a nice little office um, and, and started off with myself or one more person. And then soon after I built to another person, to another person. And we, I think we had about four or five people working in the office to we moved here, which yeah. is when, when we're having like six, seven people now. Um, so yeah, that was what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is one of them businesses where you can't, not anyone can do it. It's, you really have to have a passion and drive for media, video, uh, photography, everything like that. What would you say to someone who really loves doing that stuff and wants to start it as a business? Um, before I answer that, uh, I'm going to just say one thing, which is quite sensitive to myself. And why I'm going to say that is because, again, I just want you guys out there who's listened to my story to feel comfortable with anything that goes wrong. It's mm. not all about going right. So earlier I touched based on how I used to have three jobs and et cetera. And um, I let go of all of those jobs to pursue picture that. And I let go of university as well. There was a moment in my life um, uh, uh, in 2012 where I let go of all my jobs. I bought a new car, which was the BMW um, 3 Series, uh, an 08 plate or something like that. I forgot. So that's a big so car time as well. 06 plate, sorry, something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big car. You're totally right. Um, now, I didn't have enough money to pay insurance. And I remember I was lying about where I live, you know, the normal things that you would do as a young yeah. kid. 
uh, I tried to add my cousins, my relatives, whatever, uh, onto the policy to get me a uh, cheaper insurance. Um, so there was a point where I added an address, which is obviously f- completely to the other side of this country. And um, Chief be told I've done that as well for my first car. Everyone does yeah. that at this stage, anyways. But my main reason was because I couldn't afford it. Um, so I did that, and um, a week later, um, I got a letter sent home saying your policy has been cancelled. And I swear to God, guys, um, it broke me to pieces. Um, I actually ended up crying. I'm not going to lie. I ended up crying. And and I remember, I remember I I, I actually started praying that day as well um, to ask and to say, why, why, why are you doing this to me? Like, why are you doing this to me? Like, I've not done anything wrong. All I'm trying to do is build myself a little empire to pursue something that I love. Mm. Why is it that I can't get myself to a position where I can afford to do this, to do that? And again, I don't come from a rich background. Not, nothing whatsoever has been given to me when I've wanted it. My dad has tried my his absolute best to provide, but he's got five kids on a normal chef salary, which is God knows, like maybe at that point was mostly about two, three hundred quid. So you guys, you know, figure out yourself. Can a man of, of who's earning three hundred quid a week provide for five kids from primary school to secondary to uni, uh, as well as provide for his wife and himself and the house uh, stuff? No, Bills he can't. Everything. Bills everything. He can't. Um, so I never got what I wanted and um, um, and I, I had to, be, I think that's one of the reasons why I, I, I was, I, I wanted to become self-independent, open up a business, become who I am and what I am. Um, so the reason why I was starting with that story is because, again, nothing will start perfect, guys. It will always be weak. It was all, but that's a test. That's what tests you to become who you are because sometimes someone can punch you or slap you or uh, something can happen with finance and you it'll demotivate you. Never demotivate yourself. Always motivate yourself to become something better. If there is a weak moment, you lift yourself up, get back to where you need to go. Um, so I needed to touch on that. Um, yeah, no, no, I think it's and obviously to yeah, I, I think it's important as well. With the success, Alhamdulillah, of your business and everything like that, would you say, as as you're describing your upbringing, would you say your like your success is how do I put it? You, you boil it down to your family as well, that you have to do something for your family and and live healthy for everyone. Um, I'd say it's a small percentage. I wouldn't say that would have been my key point mm. in, in what I why I did what and how I did what. I think the key thing for me would have been it's just I always wanted to become something. I had a passion for it I, I, and I had a drive. Mm. Uh, I think that would be it. And the drive is very important because as you were saying earlier, uh, this industry is not easy yeah. you can get knocked down so quick and it's true and it's even more true because social media plays a huge role in this industry yeah. a lot of people love our work based on youtube instagram snapchat whatever you want to call it mm. now at the same time you have a lot of people who are easy to uh, 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 you know they, they easily try and demotivate you oh you, you're this you're that or this is that da, 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 da. so motivation i think would be the first thing on my hierarchy of what made me who I am. Motivation, number one. Number two, because I have a passion. Those two things. Um, Motivation kept me going. Passion made me innovate. That's it, rock bottom. Those are the two things. What would you say to someone who wants to chase their passion, but feels like they're being held back in the type of industry that it is, or by it from what other people are saying from their opinions? Um, I think... If I put myself in your shoes, guys, um, what I would say to you is if you love something, whether it's a hobby or whether it's a person, I'm just going to say a person as well. The word love is common sense. Like you love something so much that you will do anything and absolutely anything for it. So why not? If you if you if you physically can love someone and you can do anything, you can change yourself and you can do whatever you, you you can do for this one particular person. Why can you not put that same mentality for a hobby that you have or a passion that you have? If this hobby was playing football, um, let's just say example, um, us Bengali parents they don't know nothing about football. The, the first <laughs> generation. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They don't. Now, if you know that for you to become successful in football, you need to go and. Uh, go into a team or go into these special I don't know nothing about football myself I'm not not a sports kind of person but if you know that you need to do certain things work as a part-time person or full-time person save that money and put yourself into these little things and get yourself basically you have to do it yourself in other words Um, just just a quick one when you say work as a part-time person would you say work in that industry so 
Obviously, football. I, I don't think it was a great example, but football you can't really okay, work as a. Let's but, just say someone wants to be a videographer. Okay. For. So, with video and photography, I'd say yes. Um, what you would want to do then is pick up a camera, that, f- f- anything, even a small camera, even in, w- with your mobile phone. Like nowadays, iPhones have wicked camera qualities. Yeah. You can take a picture with an iPhone, transfer it to your laptop and start messing around with softwares. Once you feel comfortable and confident enough, then buy yourself a camera, learn the 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 capabilities of what's so good about using DSLRs. Like, is it the raw capability? Is it because you can manipulate lighting, whatnot, whatnot? Watch tutorials, um, see what other people such as myself have achieved, whatnot, whatnot. So... Basically, in other words, push yourself, start from small, slowly build yourself up. Don't go to the deep end. It's, I personally think it's silly because you cannot buy a, prof- a proper, proper professional camera and expect yourself to be uh, like myself. It's impossible. I think you could vouch for this as well, that regardless of the equipment you've got, it comes down to the, the software at the end of the day Correct. and how you can picture that. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Unintended. No, no, <laughs> you're totally right. Like, there were, there were, and this is me saying, uh, I hope none of my clients are watching. There, there were a couple of shots where it's, we use a stabilizer, but the stabilizer has not done a, a specific job. Like, you know, it's, it's job itself, like it wasn't fully stable. But the software itself, you could click a button, it will get even more stable. So there are certain things that you can actually do to enhance the quality of your work from the colors to the, to the stableness, to making it slow, fast, yeah. whatever. Editing plays a huge role. I think editing is because you, you know it's funny because like I said, I asked you the other day for a video, um, and as you know, I said I'll give you the shots and everything, yeah, and, yeah, and I know yeah. it's like which is why I came to you, yeah. and it's all done to the editing. It is, man. It is. So break it down as a percentage wise. How how is it from filming to the, basically for the final product? Yeah, mm. how much was your percentage? Is it filming, and how much is it editing? So I personally would say it's about. Roughly about thirty percent filming, max forty percent, and the rest six to sixty to seventy percent would be editing. Editing can literally transform. Yeah. Transform. It's like saying having a, a blank, uh, a metallic vehicle with no paint on it, but as soon as you put that Ferrari red or Lamborghini yellow or or a Nardo a, a grey, come on, mate, yeah. it transforms the vehicle. So you can have the content, you can have everything. But once an editor sets his mind to it and plays with the music and tells the story from the music, from his ideas, from mm. making it slow, whatever it is, it changes the whole aspect of the editing and the f- end product as well. Yeah, no, no. Sick. Like, I, I remember when, um, like, some some people have asked me, for example, like, oh, yeah, I want to start doing videography and everything like that. I'm like, all right, cool. What's your reason for it? And do you know anything about editing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I bought a £2,000 camera. There you go. There you go. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You you can't you can't do nothing. It's like you buying, I don't know. It's like you buying a Ferrari, but you don't know how to drive a normal car. It's like you ain't got a driving license. <laughs> exactly. You, you you can't go driving a supercar without knowing how to drive. Yeah. Like it doesn't make sense. Just because you have the capabilities of to afford it, it doesn't mean you should. Trust me, it doesn't. Even opening up a business, you, you can't go open up a full fledged restaurant without having to start from somewhere. Yeah. Bro, you wouldn't know about customer service. You wouldn't know how to operate the business. You wouldn't know how to uh, fix, uh, stop, you know, you wouldn't know how to even deal with customers, let alone your um, your um, employees and etc. Mm. The whole chain reaction would be a mess. You've mentioned cars quite a bit. And yes. I'm a petrol head, so I can't not talk about this yet. Obviously, if, if you follow Tariq on Instagram, Ari, Ari, <laughs> Ari Convertible, V10 yes, Plus. Yeah. Alhamdulillah for it. Yeah, thank you, thank that. you. Why? Firstly, why the RE have everything? Because you got a lot of choices in there. Yes. And have you always been a petrolhead? I tell you what, um, I'm not a petrolhead. Not like my friend Abed. He's a nutcase. Yeah, yeah. I've this seen boy, his videos and his. Yeah. This boy, I don't even, I don't even like being in a car with him. And I, I'm telling you, Abed, I don't like you taking my car because I know what you're getting up to, mate. <laughs> so I'm not as bad as him. His is crazy. I think for me, it's this, it's just the idea behind having a nice car. Mm. It looking good. To be honest, I don't really care about what's underneath the bonnet, mate. I don't. As long as it looks good, as long as it looks fast, as long as it looks like it's a supercar, whatever. I would have fully used the full, full, um, full uh, modes or whatever you want to call it. I wouldn't use it to its fullest capabilities. I still haven't gone into the race mode on the R8. Oh, seriously? I, swear to God, on, bro. I still haven't used it on manual <laughs> mode. I'm on. I'm on automatic, but the I mean, sports mode. If you're watching mode, this, bro, you got to teach Tariq some stuff, man. Nah, mate. <laughs> don't, don't. Because then I'll end up doing some dumb stuff like you. Um, have I always been a petrolhead? 
I'd say I, I've not been a petrol head as such, but I've always been into cars. Mm. So my very, very first car was a 1998 VW Golf. It was okay. a yellow slash goldish color. Mark IV, if I'm right. I don't know what it is. Okay, All yeah. I know is it's, an, it's, it's a 1998 <laughs> Golf. That was my first car. Okay, yeah. I bought it for about 1650 and I paid about three and a half grand insurance on that. No I mean, way. There you go. There you go. And I passed in 2010. So when I was 20, 19, yeah. 20. Sorry, I was 19 because it was in June 2010. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Then I went and bought a, um, a Fiat Punto. Yeah. After the Fiat Punto was a, um, uh, what was it? A, a BMW 3 Series, which is when I started doing picture that and etc. Mm. From the 3 Series, it was a, a red Honda Civic. I bought from Car Giant. Yeah. From the red Honda Civic was, um, uh, what was it? It was the Range Rover. Okay, so completely different. Completely different yeah. category. It was the Range Rover Sports Autobiography. It was a beautiful car. And I think that's when I was known as Mr. Spotted. Um, so people used to spot me with the Range Rover yeah, all even, over East even London. Now, with the R, even yeah. now, exactly. And weddings were like crazy, mate. I used to get people spot, 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 and sending me these snaps and Instagram mm. photos. Um, so I bought that again from uh, Car Giant. From the uh, Range Rover Sports, it was the Bentley Continental. Uh, bought that from the Bentley Continental. I bought the Rolls Royce Ghost. From that, you've still got the Ghost. Definitely. I've still got the Ghost. Yeah. From the Ghost, I simultaneously had the VW Golf uh, eighteen or nineteen plate. Um, uh, it's company car, so it was a leased vehicle. A company picture that company car because yeah. I, I couldn't be driving the Bentley and the Probably Ghost course. every day, mate. <laughs> Come on. So I had the Golf, and I still got the Golf. From there, I, I obviously I've sold the Bentley. I've got the Ghost, and the go- go- Ghost turned from a kind of a casual daily car to business to now fully business yeah. alhamdulillah so the car was doing phenomenal so it's just a fully business and I was driving the Golf for like one year yeah. non-stop and I so, got so bored speaking of that business I think just, I want to touch on it a bit later on sure sure yeah sure. just carry on with your so from from the Ghost obviously I started driving the uh, Volkswagen Golf and I started getting bored and my mate um, he, I used to always tell him he's got the C63S, the red one. Um, I always, I used to always like borrow his car because, I, I, like, you want to enjoy driving a car. That car you get is it? mental. It's beautiful, bro. Imagine going from a Bentley to a Golf. Yeah, you'd be depressed. <laughs> it's like going from a mansion to a normal house. So I was depressed. I used to always borrow his car here and there. People mostly start thinking it's my car, by the way. Mm. Um, and yeah, so s- since then I've always wanted to buy a car. and I never found the right car. And I used to always tell my mate that, bro, I want to buy a car, I want to buy a car. He's always pushing me. He's always pushing me. He's like, bro, don't worry, I'll pay for some of the deposit. Go go buy the car. I was like, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. So then, alhamdulillah, you know, recently, um, I, I thought to myself, you know what, sod it. Let me go buy a car. And alhamdulillah, I went and bought the R8. And um, it was between another Bentley, basically the newer shape of the Bentley. Not the, not the 2019 or 2020 Bentley. It's the one previous to that. One previous, the yeah. facelift model. Um, that or the R8. And again, my mates were like, Tariq, stop being a silly boy. I get get the R8. Yeah. yeah. R8, and I'll, I'll be honest choice. with you. I don't regret the choice. The R8 is phenomenal. So it, yeah, it ended up being an R8. And bro, I love the vehicle. It's, it's a beauty. It's a head turner. And it adds a statement as well. You know, it adds yeah. a statement. The reason why I asked you that, um, I know we talk about cars. It's like we're not talking about business at all. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But the reason why I asked you that is, uh, I'm, I once mentioned in my podcast that I bought a C63 as like a trophy to myself of yes, accomplishment yes. from a certain Correct. goal or something like that. Correct. Is the R it something you did like that? I'd say yes. Would I'd you say, say it's a trophy. I'd say it's a trophy. Alhamdulillah, definitely is the the, the Rolls Royce Ghost mm. and the R eight is a trophy. It shows that I've worked my ass off for the nine past nine to ten years. And um, yes, number one is for me to enjoy my life, uh, and number two is to say that I've achieved something, mm. and three. Uh, the Rolls Royce is another venture now, so it's a separate business. It's a separate entity. So that's yeah. my other business as well. So I do obviously do. It's, the, it's called luxury wedding chauffeurs. We do wedding uh, chauffeuring for the Rolls Royce. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say it's a trophy. You know, I think it's actually generally me saying this. I think it's brilliant that you've done that because, yeah. it, like, I've got my mate who does the chauffeuring and all that stuff. Yes, yeah. yes. But it works hand in hand with each other so much. Having I'm a wedding you. cinematography photography company. Yes. yes. Oh, and by the way, I've got the car as well for exactly. it. Exactly, it's the truth, man. Yeah. Like, 
uh, I normally have leaflets on the table. Uh, so whenever clients come and watch the wedding film or when we do a, a, a viewing, like a first viewing for them to watch our trailers to book us, yeah. they always end up going with a, uh, with a um, leaflet for, for luxury wedding show. So you're totally right. It's killing two birds with one stone. Mm. Why not have a caterer if you've got a venue? Why not have a, a chauffeuring company if you've got We're something always, else yeah. related to yeah. uh, the wedding industry? It's just, mm. it's, you're, you're kind of... Um, you're, you're making the best of the brand, of your clientele, of your whole network. Yeah. And I've got supporters within the industry, alhamdulillah, like people with other uh, chauffeuring companies that I have network with just throughout picture that. Yeah. Even they support me and they give me bookings as well, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So it just works. You know, that's, that's what's sick about the car community and car businesses because, yeah. like I said, my mate's been in it, but I don't know how it... This, I don't know. I don't really see it with any other industry, but with the, this the industry specifically... It's like everyone's got their own company, but everyone works together at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So let's just say your car's booked for an event. Yeah. You can easily call your mate and say, by the way, this car, I need it for this. It's, it's sick. But it's true. When you bought the Ghost, was that your plan? I'm going to be honest. I will say it was partially the plan. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to lie because it's a very big and expensive car. Yeah. There's no way you, you'd be silly. Even if you had the money, it's, why are you going to uh, why, why are you going to let your money go down the drain for no odd reason? So, yeah. yes, uh, it started off, started off as a motive where I've got the little Golf. I'm driving the Golf more than the Bentley. Let me PX, part exchange the Bentley for a world race. Yeah. So I can drive the Golf. Whenever I get bored, I'll drive the Ghost mm. and... At the same time, when I'm busy doing weddings, I can't drive the Bentley or the Ghost. So when I'm busy doing wedding shoots, the car will be busy anyway. So I'm not going to miss it. Yeah. So it just works perfectly. So yes, it started off being like partially personal plus business. But then, like I said, Alhamdulillah, the, you know, the luxury wedding show has picked up so well that it was just purely business. Are you looking to expand that? Yes. So um, uh, inshallah, obviously minus in the whole <coughs> COVID situation. Yeah. I was meant to buy another Rolls Royce this year, but that's kind of plummeted. So oh, inshallah, maybe inshallah next year, inshallah, perhaps we'll buy uh, another vehicle. Um, so right now we're focused on the, obviously the whole Rolls Royce being just purely chauffeur driven for weddings. The R8, <coughs> obviously, because I've got as a personal use, I, I, I'm giving out to like little small music videos and whatnot. No self-drive, nothing like that because yeah, it's a personal vehicle. Nightmare. No, nothing like that. It'll just be music videos and maybe little proms here and there and anything to do with chauffeuring. Yeah. Where I'm driving well, the driving car it, yeah. and one other person or music when videos. When it's in your control. Ex when it's, exactly, there you go. So that's it. So yeah, maybe um, in the future we'll expand. I mean, not even maybe, we will 100%. I'll expand yeah. 100%. Oh, that's sick, that's sick. All right, so we know what... You've been through, we've seen the background, we've saw, seen how it's all come up. Now, one thing that a lot of businesses are facing right now, and I'm pretty sure you already know I'm going to this, is quarantine. Oh, God. And um, I know it might, might sound a bit negative, but at, it, it's put a halt on the wedding industry. So yes. you don't see weddings happening. Not many people taking Rolls Royces and all that stuff. So mainly, how have you found your mindset in that time? Um, I'm like, honestly speaking, at the beginning... I didn't take it seriously. Mm. Like I'm sure a lot of people didn't take it seriously. Um, so I thought to myself, you know what, this it will just, it will, it will be fine. Blah blah blah. Give it a month or two. It's, it maybe affect. It might have. It might affect um, April weddings, which it did anyways. Yeah. But come June, July, August, we'll be fine. But my God, we're in June already, bro, and it's literally messed up everything. A lot. Like all my April clients, uh, May, June clients, all postponed. Yeah. July is coming around the corner. August is around the corner. I know it's all going to be postponed. So how has it affected me and how have I managed myself through, the, through those hardships? Um, Effect-wise, effect it's, 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 it's messed up a lot of plans, a lot of future plans. I was meant to invest in new cameras, new this, new that. You know, put that aside. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, mindset. I think for me, because I work seven days a week and I literally work every day of my life, it has given me an opportunity to enjoy myself. And a lot of people who follow me on social media would, would have seen that. All I've been doing is driving around, enjoying myself, chilling with the lads, um, doing whatever I do. I smoke a lot of shisha. I love my shisha. So doing a lot of that, yeah. um, they, they, they would have seen that and thought to themselves, yeah, Tarek's enjoying life. It's not me that's enjoying life. It's just the fact that for once in my life, after nine years or whatever, I'm able to enjoy it. I'm able to put work away back. and step back. I don't have to stress. I don't have to think to myself, shit, we've got to shoot tomorrow. Shit, there's deadlines. Shit, this, shit, that. No, yeah. I don't have to do that. For once I can enjoy it, 
what have I've built? You know, um, so it's it's kept, by me enjoying myself. It's kept my mind active, positive, yeah. and motivated. But it it soon will come to a point where I need to be like, you know what? Stop enjoying. Go back to work. And when I do go back to work, I'd feel like I've got enough mental power to be able to get back. Hundred percent. Because you reset. Seat. I've reset. Yeah. Um, it's like going on a holiday. You, you're stressed. You go on a holiday. Come back. You're reset. Yeah. So. I think that's that's how I've kind of like gone with it. I'm just going with the flow, trying to enjoy life, uh, do the best I can, but at the same time not lose myself in the process because without me, this business would be nothing. All of my colleagues, all of the staff would need me back. Mm. Without me, it would not run. Um, so yeah, that's that's what it is. The the reason why I say that is, as as much as it may have have an impact on your business, for your mental state, would you say you're almost appreciative of quarantine yes i would actually funny enough i would say that this is the very first summer that i've been able to enjoy myself oh seriously let's be honest from march to september is wedding season oh yeah exactly yeah imagine every day of summer pretty much 95 mm. percent every day is shoot whether it's mendy's weddings engagements post shoots pre-shoots flying out to dubai flying out to thailand flying out to whatever i'm always on the on the goal, on the goal i yeah. remember two years ago mate i went to qatar for a wedding the very same day 2nd of august if i'm correct i landed and arrived at home at 12 p.m 2 p.m was the wedding Seriously. I swear on my life. So not even a break. There you go. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Forget that. Last year, um, I went to Thailand. The night before was the London uh, London Bengali wedding fair. Mm. Bro, the Bengali wedding fair was supposed to last seven up, up, until, up until 7 p.m. I left the show at 5 p.m. Let my colleagues do the rest. Went home, got changed, drove to the airport. No way, man. I'm telling you. It, that's how it is. Um, there's so many things like the Dubai one... Um, from London to uh, Manchester, drive there, do a little shoot there. From Manchester, from Manchester Airport, fly to, du- uh, to Dubai, come back, yeah. come back to Manchester, drive f- after a Is flight and on? drive back from Manchester to London. <laughs> yeah. It's just non-stop. Everything is non-stop, but it's fun. Yeah. It's stuff like that. That do you enjoy what you do. I do. I swear to God, I I enjoy what I do, and that's why I'm always active. I'm always jolly. I'm always smiling. I always, I'm always positive. Mm. I'm always motivated because I enjoy it. You know, and that's what makes me who I am. That's what's made me who I am as well. If I didn't, then I would have been like, oh God, I can't do it anymore. My back's gone, my back this, my back. Yeah. I would have always complained. I'm telling you now, I don't have the same strength in my back that I used to have back in when I, when yeah, I first yeah, yeah. started. I swear, it pains. Sometimes I can't even go to sleep. That's how bad it is. I think that's one of the main perks of working for yourself and having your own company, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because a lot of people don't experience that when they're working for other people and, you know, you're thinking, you get Monday morning feeling. I'm pretty sure you probably don't get that. I don't. There's no such thing as weekend. There's no such thing as, I'm looking forward to Friday. Yeah. Oh, Friday evening, I'm going out with the lads. Nothing like, there's no days off. Every day is a working day. Yes, I I have the privilege of of not coming into work at 9 a.m. I can come, you know, uh, 11, 12, 1 p.m., 2 p.m. I could do that. Mm. But at the same time, I do leave late Mm. because clients come uh, after their work. They work nine to five. Yeah. So I'm having to stay back in the office. For, uh, you know, clients will come 6, 7 p.m. I, I'm staying here until 8, 9 p.m. But that's what you have to do when you work for yourself. If this was my place, I wouldn't mind at all because it's, so, <laughs> it's, it's so homely. It is. You've got this nice long sofa here. The way it's all set up, no, I've got you. I mean, you've got your studio. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Sick. No, Alhamdulillah. Th- th- this place has been set up, set up in, a, in a way where you won't feel like it's work. You're totally mm. right. This room has been made in a way where it does feel very cozy, very homely. You don't feel like you're in an office. Yeah. Um, and that's how I wanted it. I wanted clients to come in here, even my colleagues who want to chill in here, to feel like they're in a whole different vibe. Mm. And um, if a lot of people, a lot of people here might actually have seen me on my social, I end up having shisha nights with the lads here on movie night. We chill here. Man? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like we enjoy it. ourselves here. Yeah. Yeah. You've got, a, a, you know, a cinema screen with a surround sound, bass and everything. It's a proper chill zone. So uh, we do use this space quite a lot. It util- it's utilised. Uh, you know how I just mentioned about quarantine? Yes. Saying that, I do see you a lot, especially on Instagram at Elevate Steakhouse. Yes. So yes, you're yes. still doing some shoots. Yes, so um, during this time, and I'm, I'm glad you actually picked up on this. Um, during this time, obviously, as, as everyone is aware, there is no such thing as weddings. Weddings literally out of the window. Mm. So uh, people that I used to work with previously and new clients as well, uh, Elva, we, we, we've done a lot of commercial related stuff from photography to, to videos and whatnot. Um, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of commercial stuff still, basically. So yeah. that's the only way to actually make something 
in terms of cash. Um, so we're doing a commercial ads for Elva and other companies um, out there. And mm. that's what we're doing. And a lot of people will soon need to open up as well. So it is advised that you guys actually make a little promo video saying, guys, we're back or we're going to be opening soon, this and the other, promote yeah. your business. So those who are craving your food or craving shisha or craving whatever, know that you're going to be back. And yeah. give them you a can't really go ghosting this time. You can't. You need to keep active, but you need to remind them, guys, we're still here. Don't yeah. forget about us. <laughs> we're going to open up soon. <laughs> we're going to open up soon when Boris tells us. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally. So this podcast has been six so far. I've really enjoyed it myself. Um, I hope you have as well. I did as well. I did. Um, but we've talked about a lot from the beginning to where you are now. But main thing we haven't talked about, um, and like we said before in the podcast, but before the podcast started, is, and that it's overlooked a lot. Tell me about the struggles that you've had to face. And anything else that's had a negative impact on your business or yourself mainly? Um, Because you're still quite young. So you still have like a young mentality as well. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. I I still still, still like to say I'm 21, by the way. I just started the business yesterday. (laughs) Um, Struggles, bro. Where do I start, man? Um, You are right. A lot of people see the the end product. Mm. It's like, um, how do I put it? When you look at an iMac, mate, the, the latest iMac did not start from the latest iMac. It started off from a big fat box. Yeah. <laughs> it started from a big fat TV style box. It wasn't thin overnight. Mm. They've innovated. So back in the days, um, I started with big fat cameras as well, but that's not the point. Um, struggles. Um, bro, I've had, I've had a lot of struggles, man. And I think a lot of struggles at the beginning was the fact that I didn't know what I was doing. I had to watch YouTube videos to understand how to edit this, edit that. There was there was um, media companies that other people were saying, Tarek, can you do this? Can you do that? Or Tarek, they're, they're wicked. Like mm. my boys used to say, bro, they're sick, man. You should try this. And I used to look at them and I used to think, you know what? I want to do this. I want to do this. So I used to be on Google researching, researching what software this, what software that, da, 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 da. So at the beginning, my main struggles would be educating myself. And... I was, Soon after I've educated myself and I've bought everything that I needed, it was innovating myself. How do I stand against these companies who've been out there for five, ten years? Yeah. Um, so it was always a, f- a battle between learning and implementing and being creative. Once I've got myself into a position where, alhamdulillah, we're comfortable, we've got a brand, we've got a style, whatnot, whatnot. The difficult part was maintaining it. Um, maintaining the brand with any business. Yeah. Once you've made it, you need to maintain it. Um and, and, and the whole idea of cash flow. Uh, once you, so at the beginning, you're working for yourself. Yes, if you make 10 pounds, you're fine. You, you don't, you, you, you know, you'd say to yourself, sorry, I'm not gonna go out with the lads because I can't afford it. Or I'm not gonna go on holiday because I can't afford it. But once you have staff <coughs> in your business, you've mate. You've got responsibilities then. You've got responsibilities. Yeah. I can sleep 24 seven and say, you know what, Alhamdulillah, I've made a killing last year. I don't have to worry, but no. What about them lot? Yeah. What about paying them? They've, signed a contract with you to say yes Tarek I'm going to be working with you for you whatever you have to pay them so it came to a point where it wasn't enough so I had to put myself into a position where I'm having to now go out even more do even more harder things I had to knock on people's door that I never wanted to or never should have yeah. so building connections networks and whatnot was struggle um, did you have to just a quick one did you have to do all those networking and connections face to face because back then when you started Social media wasn't anywhere right near what it is right now. You're what right. Was it, like then? it was it's exactly what you just said, bro. I remember them days where um, I caught, I Google all the wedding companies, whether it's caterers, uh, venues, uh, uh, event management companies. I used to call them and say, hey guys, my name is Tarek. I own this, I own that. I mm. do this, I do that. Is it all right if I came in for a meeting? I went to them and I showed them my work and whatnot. A lot of people said, sorry, bro. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of people who actually said yes. I'm not going to name names. Um, it would be unfair because, uh, yeah, anyway. No, I'm not no, gonna I, name I names, know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I've got the same with, with podcasts. Exactly. And stuff like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to name names, but there were two or three individuals or companies, should I say, they've helped me a lot mm. to become where I am, to become the person that I am. And <clears throat> the struggles are not easy. I've had moments where I, I, was, I was very demotivated. I used to sleep stressed at night. And I swear to God, bro, I used to sleep stressed at night. Um, uh, I used to have to put my uh, my myself away and think about the business. I.e., like I said, like my mates used to go on holidays three, four times a year. Can you believe? I've never been on a holiday till I was twenty-five. No way. Apart from going bang the dish. Seriously, I swear my life, bro. 
And you you hearing this, you must be thinking, what the front door? Are you chatting shit, bro? Well, no, I never went out of the country, yeah. apart from Bangladesh, obviously, yeah. to go on a holiday since enjoy I was yourself. 12, and enjoy myself since the age of 25. That alone should tell you guys that I didn't splash money when I made money yeah. to enjoy myself. I put the business first. I invested the money into equipment, into uh, uh, the office into designing the office into buying a bloody TV uh, f- buying a couch for the customers to sit down um, um, whatever I put the business first and I saw in my life I don't regret that a single bit you have to put away the luxuries aside to build an empire yeah 100%. and since then mate I've been flying out left right and centre and I'm so blessed that my job takes me to destination is that I never ever dreamt I would go. I never thought I'd go to Qatar. I never thought I'd go to Pakistan. Yeah. I never thought I'd go to Thailand. I never thought I'd go to Qatar. I never thought I'd go to anywhere of these countries, you know? And again, my work has taken me to those places because I put my business first. Now it's looking after me and now it's treating me the way it, it should do. Um, and and people obviously like, you know, it's common sense. People look at me now and say, bruv, this guy is, doing this this guy's doing that he's got this he's got that he's got you know a lot of people make snarky comments alhamdulillah a lot of people make good comments as well but it's important for you guys to know boys that i never enjoyed my life i never ever did i used to start early morning come home two three in the morning from the office uh, I, I i never gave time to my family my family used to go on weddings i i never used to go to these family weddings my family used to go to uh, gatherings i never ever used to go to gatherings I had family in my house coming uh, for whatever gatherings. I never was there, yeah. and I missed all that. I'm a, I I call myself a, a very family oriented guy, but I never was able to go there. And the days that I was able to go to weddings and enjoy family gatherings, I swear to God, I used to enjoy it so much, so much. So the struggles were real. I think that was mentioned in a previous podcast as well, where everyone it's like they want to see. The successful guy, yeah. Tarek Mia, driving, all right, look at him, he's sick. But no one really sees the the struggles no, and man. the hardship that's gone into no. what has actually made you today. It's true. And it's so important to I'll add cover. one thing there, <clears throat> which is I own picture that 100% outright. Mm. And that, I'm not boasting. What I'm trying to say to you is I don't have a partner. I don't have a partner who can stay in the office sort out the uh, clients, deal with the meetings, deal with the marketing, deal with social media, deal with invoicing, deal with accounts, deal with the accountant, deal with uh, complaints, whatever it is. Yeah. I have to do A to Z. On top of that, I have to go on shoots. I have to edit. I have to look out for my um, staff here. I have to do everything on my own. Saying that, do you think life or business would be easier if you had a partner? And I'll be honest with you. Is there any point where you wish mm, I should have partnered up with someone on this? To be honest, um, I'd say no. Actually, no. I'm, I'm going to say 50-50. There, there was a point where I was thinking to myself, you know what, should I bring someone on board, mm. sell 50%, 20%, 30%, 10%, whatever it is. Yeah. Bring someone on board to take, uh, take over a, a lot of workload from my shoulder. There was a, a, a time actually. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I, saw, I thought to myself, you know what, if I did that, it might back, backfire. I built something so strong and I've I've held on to it for nearly 10 years. What makes you think the next 10 years will be the same with this same person? Yeah. So yeah, I did think at that point, at one point, sorry. Um, but I think right now I, I wouldn't and I won't. I'd rather, I'd rather close the business at a very strong point and say, guys, picture that is closed. We've had an amazing X amount of years. Please keep us in your duas. Yeah. And I hope you guys had an amazing journey with us because we have as well. I'd rather do that than sell it. However, that's mad. Even even then, I think you have to. F- if if someone was to come on board, they have to have the same passion as you. Exactly. And I think that's very very hard to come exactly. back. Exactly, you're totally right. Mad. Have you enjoyed it so far? Yeah, I have. I'm not lie. <laughs> First time telling my story. Um, yeah, telling my story in front of a camera. That's what I'm saying because, like, yeah. like I said, a lot of people when they come on the podcast, they they hear. Firstly, the, obviously, but as you're talking about it, you've yeah. experienced it for yourself, but even when they watch it back, they're like, no way that I've been through this and everything. It's true, document it's true. the whole process, man. I think that's the main important thing. So for people who are watching this right now, whatever, whatever age they may be, I'm not even going to say an age, but whatever age they may be, and want to start the business following their passion or anything really, what's your advice to them? 
Um, I think the advice would be um, make sure that you're not okay. You know what? The important thing is, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna say it straight. Do not put money first. Don't put money or finance first. Meaning, don't say you know what Tarek's making it killing. I can make it killing. Let me go become a photographer. No, just because I, I, I'm doing well, it doesn't mean I'm doing well because I've chased money. No, what you want to do is make sure you have your mind set on the fact that you love this one thing whether it's being a salesman selling cars being a photographer uh, uh, uh whatever it is make sure your passion and is is important to you that has to come first so once you know it's passion before finance or money then you know you've got something uh, and when when you when you've used that as your first motive it, it it's only going to take you further and beyond so let me give you an example if you were a photographer and one of your clients didn't like your work and she said, what the F is this? I, you said you're going to give me... The, it's going to demotivate you. Automatically, it's going to demotivate you. Regardless of what kind of person you are and how strong you're built, it's going to demotivate you. But however, if it's your passion, your brain would automatically come up with ideas. I.e., oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Can I offer you whatever? It doesn't have to be a discount. You can say, can I offer you guys a little post-shoot, pre-shoot? Can I offer you guys a, a complimentary service? La, 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 la. And you'll only come up with these ideas if you believe in yourself and it's a passion. However, if it was money, you'd think to yourself, you know what, sod this, she's already paid me. Why am I going to spend another hour doing another photo shoot? It's going to cost me money. I've got another client waiting for me, la, la, la. That's how your brain's going to work. But if you, again, if you don't think like that, it will be passion first and you would always believe in yourself and you would always want to give the best service ever to your clients so you i think that would go be like 100 miles beyond what exactly you can offer. you'd always want to go beyond whatever you can to make your clients happy do the best for your work and always strive so the last question i always end these podcasts on what does success mean to you because to a lot of people obviously it means money or whatever yeah what does success um, mean to you tariff me off i think success for me bro it, it, it's all it's always it's only going to come down to happiness now, yes, finance does bring an element of, um, I wouldn't say happiness, mm. it's stress-free. Yeah, freedom. Finance, re- yeah, freedom of, what is it? Freedom of finance, yeah. basically. Um, you don't have to worry about having to pay for certain things and borrow things and whatnot. But happy, uh, success for me doesn't mean money. Mm. What it means to me is that I'm happy. People know that I've achieved something. Um, people know that Tarek's built a brand. For me, that's happiness and that's success. If people talk about me in a way where, you know what, picture that's doing sick, picture that's phenomenal, picture that's wicked, that will make me sleep at night. Not because I'm looking at my bank balance and th- seeing X amount sitting there. That's not what's going to make yeah. me sleep at night. Because if I look at that, but at the same time know that my family is not happy with me, my uh, co- my colleagues are not happy with me, well, and my that you're clients... Not happy with yourself my clients are not happy with me and I'm not happy with myself because of all that. I won't be able to go sleep. That money is not going to make no one be happy with me. Yeah. So for me, ultimately, it's the fact that people are happy with who I am and know that I will do absolutely anything to put a smile on their face to my capabilities, obviously. And I will always go that extra mile to make them happy. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That has been episode 20. I believe it's 20. It's 20 episodes now, which is mad. That's amazing. Episode 20 of CEO Cast with Tarek Mia himself. Um, before, I just, before I want to end, I just want to say, obviously, follow Tarek. Picture that luxury wedding uh, car hat. Show for yeah. On uh, Instagram. I'll put the all links here right now anyway. But it, I, I can see the passion. Before this podcast started, I could see the passion in Tarek because the reason why this the set might look beautiful right now is because Tyreek himself did it. Um, and I was taken back by like, like, wow, this guy is sick. <laughs> it's not his podcast, but he's going the extra mile to make sure that everything looks beautiful. So everything you're seeing right now is all down to Tyreek. And Thank you. <laughs> that is picture that, that's what picture that is all about. So, bro, I know when I'll get married. But you, know but you ain't got a choice after now. <laughs> no, no, 100% it's going to happen. And we've got evidence you're going to come. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, bro. Um, Follow CEO Cast. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you follow and leave a review. Um, like I said, follow both of us. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll catch you next week on the next one. Amazing. How was that? Alhamdulillah, bro. You smashed it. Alhamdulillah, bro. Like in touch. Legend you guys still, man. Alhamdulillah. Thank legend you, man. Guy. I really appreciate that. Honestly. You're most welcome, bro. I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think I've enjoyed myself. Um, 
Yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a good way to reflect, reflect, let everything out from here into yeah. this. Because sometimes it's, it's even, you know, it's uh, sometimes I want to go on a podcast like someone else's podcast because yeah. it's a way to just almost vent something off Correct. and talk about something that you're passionate about. It's true, it's true. It's mad. I think what's beautiful about this whole concept is there's no element of fabrication. Mm. It's you reflecting from what's inside here going back five years ten years nine years seven years yeah and just telling the story how it is and it's nice to kind of relive those memories yeah um i year i was telling you how i went to barclays bank to see my bank balance bro i think to myself once upon a time that bank balance meant a lot to me that gave me peace yeah to know that i was financially strong at that point and again what's beautiful about my story is the fact that I invested pretty much 80% of my wealth mm. into this because I believed in it because yeah. it was a passion it was a dream not to make money because I loved what I was doing mm. and I believed in what I was doing and I don't know how much it expressed but passion and and having something that you love is is a key element to success bro I'm telling you man yeah. if you don't love what you're doing believe me it will take one year to you to collapse 100% collapse. I, I can vouch for that man you, this is where you just think Alhamdulillah for everything Alhamdulillah There's a reason behind everything There is There's also something That I should have actually touched on Yeah You can put it in isn't yeah. it? <laughs> cool. Okay Of course Let me just tell you quickly though Go on Actually let me tell the story Go on Alright should we carry on yeah um, One thing that I wanted to add actually is Before picture that I always wanted this one job And the job was to work in Car Giant Seriously? Yes <laughs> And I, see, I, it, it's good I'm telling you guys this is because I be <laughs> no, I'll tell you why a car giant. It's not because I'm a petrol head or mm. anything like that. I, I do love cars, obviously. Yeah. That's one of the reasons. But the main reason why I wanted to work for car giant was because I love the idea of being a sales rep. Yeah. So sales rep kind of tied along with the whole business venture that I wanted to start and do. So there was obviously I, as you as you know like I bought two of my cars from Car Giant that's when I started wanting to become something to do with yeah, yeah car, a Car Giant yeah a sales rep so I was on Car Giant's website the careers page at the bo- uh, button at the bottom clicked it and there was a job available so I applied for that job and um, they accepted the initial application so there's three stages which is the application telephone interview face to face and then the actual job yeah. so first time I did it I've Passed the application, then went to a telephone interview. interview. I had the call, I was so excited. Um, the call lasted an X amount of time uh, and she asked me several questions, blah, blah, blah. I failed. And I was so gutted to the point where I called back and said, guys, what happened? Well, why did I fail? Can you please explain? Yeah. So they said, um, you're, 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 the way you were talking, you weren't confident enough. Okay, Your right. answers weren't, you wasn't assertive assertive basically so you were like oh maybe this maybe that rather than i would do this i would do that so i took that feedback and that's another thing about life don't take feedback as a negative always take as a positive work on it work on it so i took that a couple of months down the line another post came same thing i called them up sorry i I applied they called me i did my uh, telephone interview i passed that because i took that feedback on board blah 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 and i was called into a face-to-face and I was loving life at that point. I was like, whoa, I did it. So I went to the face-to-face, but unfortunately I failed. And at that point, it's, it's actually quite a sad part because at that point I thought to myself, why is it that I want to do something? Bear in mind, this was before picture that, yeah? yeah. Why? I was, I, was, I was praying one day and I was saying, why am I not given this job? I've, I want this job so badly. I'm trying so bad and I'm praying for this job. Why are you not giving me the job? I was talking to Allah. I was like, why are you not giving this job to me? Why have I done to you? Why are you not giving it? And at that point, I was thinking to myself, why are you not doing it? Like, I'm, I'm doing everything. I'm doing what a Muslim person would do. Pray for it. Prepare for it. Whatever, whatever. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this story is because there's a saying, Allah is the best planners of all planners. 100%. And if I look at myself, if I was to be able to see myself from then as a 21 or 20 year old Tariq to now, nine, 10 years on, I would say, F that job. I'm going to do what's written for me. But at that point, I was praying, I was questioning, I was doubting, 
I was doing so many things to to ask, why the hell are you not giving me something when I'm asking you and I'm praying for it and I'm trying my absolute best for it. And only till now I've realized he had bigger, greater, much more important things planned for me. So yes. I think that's such a powerful message because yeah. I, I can vouch for that 100, and, 100 billion percent. There's no question about it. Everything that happens in your life, whether it's good or bad, is a blessing and it always happens for a reason. Correct. Whether someone, whoever else right now, whether something's happened in your life where you think it's something negative, something's taken a big toll on you and you're thinking, why, why, why? I guarantee you in a few years time or sometime in the future, you're going to see that that was probably the biggest blessing that you've yes. had in your life. I agree. Um, especially as a Muslim as well. I'm pretty sure whoever's Muslim watching this right now, you you know for a fact that's that's how it is. It's true. God is the best of all planners. It's um, true, man. I, I, I 100% agree, bro. And there's so many small stories like that that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be watching and thinking, what the front door, mate? I never thought Tarek ever went through this, ever went through that. Yeah. Nothing's perfect in life. Yeah. Nothing is. You, you, you just go with the flow, do what your heart says, believe in yourself. And I promise you, things will automatically fall in line. Yes, it will have dips, but those dips are down to you to lift back up. Yeah. Picture that wasn't always the greatest. I've had complaints. I've had this. I've had that. I'm not going to deny it. I'm, I'm not perfect. If I can't be perfect, how, can, how, how on earth is a business going to be perfect? Even multi-billion pound corp- corporations are not perfect. Mm. Why do you have a complaints department? Because they're not perfect. Yeah. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So I'm not going to sit here and make myself look like the best of the best. No, we all, we, we all do wrongs. Even companies do wrongs. So yeah, ultimately bro, just go with the flow and everything's written for you. With hardship comes ease. And I think it's all down to how you Go about that hardship. Correct. Is what is going to get you out of that ease and how it's going to take you further. Sure. Alhamdulillah for everything Alhamdulillah. really is what I want to say. <laughs> but yeah, man. Beautiful. So yeah, I think that's it, man. Um, I think I've, I've actually now, I feel content that I've touched base on everything. I'm really happy with that, man. Thank you. No, Once again, I appreciate that a lot. It's all good. It's all good. Um, Inshallah, we'll see each other soon. Make sure that... I say, I say when I get married, I haven't even got a girlfriend yet. Enough, enough, <laughs> Listen, I'll come who's watching this? This guy needs a wife. <laughs> so um, please give him a shout. 